Good evening. Welcome to the General Conference Medical Missionary Department seminar entitled The 21st Medical Missionary. Thank you for watching last night's presentation by Brother Dragon Ivanov. It shows us that God is everywhere, He is in everything, and He is a God of order. most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful and thankful hearts for gathering us here together. And as we listen to this message, Lord, that our hearts can be melted, that we can be encouraged, Lord, to do our part in this great work that you've commissioned before us. Help us that we can yield to your will, that we can yield to the voice of your Holy Spirit as it tells us whom to talk to, what to say, teaching them simple things that they can apply in their lives to better their health, their mental state, and their spirituality. And as we continue forward, Lord, that we can continue learning and that we can be walking testimonies and a blessing unto those who surround us. In Jesus' name we pray, and we thank you and we give you all the glory. Amen. Our speaker for tonight is Brother Les Bauer from White Creek Wellness Center, our wellness center here in Tennessee, and the topic tonight is entitled The Institute. My name is Les Bauer, and I am the director of White Creek Wellness Center, and I am here today to share with you some of my experiences uh, with uh, the institutional work and some, some directions from the inspiration of uh, God on this subject. White Creek Wellness Center started in 2006, so we have been there almost, um, almost 14 years, uh, 16 years, and we, we have benefited greatly from following the pen of inspiration. A little history of myself, in 1975, I had gone to what was called the Philadelphian Institute. It was run by a Dr. Charlotte Holmes and her husband, Campbell. They had started that institute in 1959. Prior to that, they had owned a hospital in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And the Lord had impressed them that they were not doing um, what really the Lord wanted them to do. So they started the, the at Institute there in Sulphur Springs, Arkansas, with a uh, dedication to follow only what uh, the pen of inspiration gave on that subject. It was a great privilege to to be able to learn under that circumstance. When I came there in 1975, I was not uh, a Christian. And they 
I had been a vegetarian for three years, and, but they, they let me come and uh, work in the organic gardens and those things. And I was invited to, to their worships, and I met, I met the Lord there. And, oh, maybe uh, six months or eight months later, uh, then my now wife, Kathy, um, came to the Institute also. Um, and she was not a Christian at the time. And shortly after, she accepted the Lord there. And we spent time studying together and determined that this is the work the Lord wanted us to do. So since that time, um, we have been um, endeavoring to do the medical missionary work in whatever capacity uh, the Lord brought into our lives. We were able to eventually uh, manage that institute in Sulphur Springs. And the experience was, was magnificent, uh, trying at times, but uh, greatly blessed from the experience. And today, I, I, I would like to share with you uh, some, some writings in relation to the Institute. And we're going we're gonna to look at uh, why, why we should have a medical missionary Institute, uh, where, where, do, where should they be, um, uh, how large should they be, in what parts of the country, um, how we are to do it, how uh, uh, we are to, to do this work, and who, who should be doing it. So if we look f uh, first from Councils on Health, Councils on Health is a magnificent compilation um, that particularly for medical missionary work. And uh, we'll take a lot of our quotes from there, of course, which are taken from other places. And it is written in, uh, extensively in, in uh, the testimonies to the church and in other areas. So in Councils on Health, page 204, it says, The Lord years ago gave me special light in regard to the establishment of a health institution where the sick could be treated on altogether different lines from those followed in any other institution in our world. It was to be founded and conducted upon Bible principles. And the Lord's instrumentality, and as the Lord's instrumentality, and it was to be in his hands, one of the most effective agencies for giving light to the world. It was God's purpose that it should stand forth with scientific ability, with moral and spiritual power, and as a faithful sentinel of reform in all its bearings. All who should act a, a part in it were to be reformers, having respect to its principles and heeding the light of reform shining upon us as a people. Where is it? Why are we there? We are there to give light to the world, to show the world what God intended for the reformation of man should be. Also from Councils on Health, page 205, said God designed that the institution which he should establish should stand forth as a beacon of light, of warning and reproof. He would prove to the world that an institution conducted on religious principles as an asylum for the sick could be sustained without sacrificing its peculiar, holy character, that it could keep free from the objectionable features found in other health institutions. It was to be an instrumentality for bringing about great reforms. So today, if you look at the health work, it seems that the world is interested in health. Many people are vegan, vegetarian, but what is, what is always attached to it is some form of, of new age or Eastern religion or some pagan philosophies. So God's people were to show to the world that reform from God's point of view is the best and, and, and the most productive to health. 
So it's for God's people. Uh, our sanitariums are to help make up the number of God's people from Medical Missionary, page 327. So our work is to, to bring character to the church, to, to enlighten uh, those who would not um, necessarily uh, beckon the doors of a church otherwise. They would come in need of health and, and then meet God and God's people on these grounds. Also from Medical Ministry, page 252, it says, Not one word too much has been said in vindication and praise of genuine medical missionary work. Connected with other lines of gospel work, medical missionary work is the instrument by which the ground is prepared for the sowing of the seed of truth, and the instrument also by which the harvest is reaped. If all our ministers had received and practiced the light that God had given on health reform, the needy and the outcast would be embraced in every evangelistic effort to as much larger extent than they have been. With medical missionary work, acting as the helping hand of the gospel ministry, the sick would be restored to health and many souls would be led into the light. So it, it is an instrument in God's hands. Um, and when connected with the, the other part of the gospel work, it's, it's going, to, going to prepare the ground for the harvest. It's going to prepare the ground for the makeup of God's people in the end. And it will also be the instrument that will also harvest um, that is reaped. So we, we have a special work to do. And, and I pray that this, this burden will fall on many. Also from Evangelism, page 523, it says, you will never be ministers after the gospel order till you show a decided interest in medical missionary work, the gospel of healing and blessing and strengthening. We, we need to be teaching these strongly in our schools. We need uh, ministers uh, dedicated to, to do this work along with the other gospel work. Also from Bible Echo, August 12th, 1901, medical missionary work and the gospel ministry are the channels through which God seeks to pour a constant supply of his goodness. They are to be as a river of life for the irrigation of the church. So why are we to have these institutions? These institutions are to bring light to the world, to bring God's people in connection with the world, but also it is to strengthen and feed the church with the principles of reform. If we do not, then we will lose those principles. They will become uh, a dull and irrespected in our churches. So God wants us to raise this right arm uh, to strengthen the church. So it is the divine plan that we shall work as the disciples work. Physical healing is bound up with the gospel commission and the work of the gospel. Teaching and healing are never to be separated. Never to be separated. It's, if you look at Christ's work, oftentimes he did much more physical healing than he did preaching because the need was there. And it, it is what's happening in the world now. Sickness is in such profusion that, that um, it's uh, invading the world that we need, we need to raise this hand of the ministry higher. Where are we to do this work? Uh, this is from Councils on Health, page 215. God has qualified his people to enlighten the world. He has entrusted them with faculties by which they are to extend his work until it shall encircle the globe. In all parts of the earth, they are to establish sanitariums, schools, publishing houses, and kindred facilities for the accomplishment of his work. 
where it says it, show, it should encircle the, the globe. We have in our church at this time, just a few places around the world, but we should be encircling the globe with this work. Also from Councils on Health, page 215, next paragraph, paragraph three, Christ cooperates with those who engage in medical missionary work, men and women who unselfishly do what they can to establish sanitariums and treatment rooms in many lands will be richly rewarded. Those who visit these institutions will be benefited physically, mentally, and spiritually. The weary will be refreshed, the sick restored to health, the sin burdened relieved. In far off country, from those whose hearts are by these agencies turned from the service of sin unto righteousness will be heard uh, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. By their songs of grateful praise, a testimony will be born that will win others allegiance and to fellowship with Christ. Yes, all the world. So where, where shall we place these sanitariums. So in, in the White Creek Wellness Center, I was working in another field and I was asked to uh, consider coming and establishing this sanitarium. And so the, we, we made up this list of criteria uh, which comes from the Spirit of Prophecy to see if it would match um, with, with that criteria and I came and it was it's it's 100 acres it's at the end of a road there's no other uh, construction around no other buildings around just just nature it, is that what God wants well let's see this is from councils on health page 265 light has been given me that in medical missionary work, we have lost great advantages by failing to realize the need of a change in our plans in regard to the location of sanitariums. It is the Lord's will that these institutions shall be established outside the city. They should be situated in the country, in the midst of surroundings as attractive as possible, in nature, the Lord's garden, the sick will always find something to divert their attention from themselves and lift their thoughts to God. Oh, the quietude of the garden of God, nature. And what a, what a beautiful opportunity to pull away from the bustle and the hustle of the surroundings of the cities. Also from uh, Councils on Health, page 265, paragraph four, I have been instructed that the sick should be cared for away from the bustle of the cities, away from the noise of streetcars and the continual rattling of carts and carriages. People who come to our sanitariums from country homes will appreciate a quiet place and in retirement patients will be more readily influenced by the Spirit of God. So we see that God's intent is for, the, for a quietude, a place of reflection. So when we give our worships morning and evening, we want to leave the, the, the patients to contemplate. They want them to contemplate the, uh, what God might be impressing upon their hearts. And it takes that quietude, that time in nature, those walks that um, there are not horns beeping and sirens going and, people shouting and the bustle of commerce. Councils on Health, page 267. Why are our physicians so eager to be, be located in the cities? The very atmosphere of the cities is polluted. In them, patients who have unnatural appetites to overcome cannot be properly guarded. To patients who are victims of strong drink, the saloons of a city are a continual temptation. To place our sanitariums where they are surrounded by ungodliness is to counterwork the efforts made to restore the patients to health. In our work, in sanitarium work, in institute work, 
we will come in contact with these people. These people that uh, are, are victims of society, victims of alcohol, victims of, of uh, street drugs, victims of medications. There, it, it is so rare to find someone that has not been taking medications for years that have never worked, but are making them worse and worse. Um, it, is, it is important that they have um, this, this refreshing air, this refreshing environment, and not be attracted by those things in the world to have victory. We have met many, many, many an individual that has come here with these problems. Again, um, this is from Councils on Health, page 267. In the future, the condition of things in the cities will grow more and more objectionable. And the influence of the city's surroundings will be acknowledged as unfavorable to the accomplishment of the work that our sanitarium should do. I don't know a, 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 a more apparent truth than this right now. The cities are rampant with violence. They're rampant with, with um, sexuality and, and just perverseness all over. Um, we, we need to, to bring people out and strengthen them um, in this quiet environment. Also, we need to consider something else, uh, and that is uh, not so much around the very opulent, uh, the very uh, wealthy in our society. From volume seven of the testimonies, page 88 and 89, it says, it might seem to us that it would be best to select our sanitarium places among the wealthy that this would give character to our work and secure patronage for our institutions. But in this, there is no light. The Lord seeth not as man seeth, 1 Samuel 16, 7. Man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. The fewer grand buildings there are around our institutions, the less vexation we shall experience. Many of the wealthy property owners are irreligious and irreverent. Worldly thoughts fill their minds. Worldly amusements, merriment, and hilarity occupy their time. Extravagance in dress and luxurious living absorb their means. The heavenly messengers are not welcome to their homes. They want God afar off. So we, we don't want to be located in wealthier parts of, the, of, of, of land and of areas. Neither do we want to be in, in the very um, poorer parts either. We, we want to be, again, more in nature, away from these things to draw the people out of whatever environment they're in to something different, a new, new ways of thinking new desires in their lives. We also have to consider how, how, how should we do this work? Among the greatest dangers to our health institutions is the influence of physicians, superintendents, and helpers who profess to believe the present truth, but who have never taken their stand fully upon health reform. Some have no conscientious scruples in regard to their eating, drinking, and dressing. How can the physicians or anyone else present the matter as it is when he himself is indulging in the use of harmful things? God's blessing will, not, will rest upon every effort made to awaken an interest in health reform, for it is needed everywhere. There must be a revival in regard to this matter for God purposes to accomplish much through this victory. Our experience here in, in White Creek Wellness Center is that the, the littlest things, the, the littlest habits in life, the littlest indulgences affect the health in tremendous ways. 
We can see uh, um, blood sugar stop going down. We can see um, blood pressure maybe even going back up. And we can see all these different changes when some little aspect in life is not adhered to or, or indulged. And uh, it is very important that the, to qualify for the medical missionary work is not a degree. Um, it is not uh, necessary some training in the past, some education. It is dedication. And God will take anyone that is dedicated and place them uh, in as high and as strong a place as possible to, to help um, support his work, to help be an influence. So it is really important that we dedicate ourselves fully to the Lord's work. Again, it says, and uh, this is from Review and Herald, October 16th, 1883. It is far easier to allow matters in our, in our important institution to go in a lax, loose way than to weed out that which is offensive, which will corrupt and destroy confidence and faith. But it would be far better to have a smaller number of workers to accomplish less, and as far as possible to have these who are engaged in the work true-hearted, firm as a rock in principle, loving the whole truth, obedient to all the commandments of God. This is the best. This is what's best. Now, it may be that you, you have to start smaller. It may be that you don't progress as fast as you, you would like. But it is, it is far more important to be sure that everyone is dedicated to the service of God, dedicated to this particular work, than to bring in great numbers that will, will destroy the work. It will destroy the church. Also, um, from Councils on Health, page 272, it says, if we are to go to the expense of building sanitariums in order that we may work for the salvation of the sick and afflicted, we must plan our work in such a way that those who we desire to help will receive the help they need. We are to do all in our power for the healing of the body, but we are to make the healing of the soul far greater importance. Those who come to our sanitariums as patients are to be shown the way of salvation, that they may repeat or repent and hear the words, thy sins are forgiven thee, go in peace and sin no more. Our goal is not to make healthy sinners. Our goal is to bring each soul closer to God. This is why God has chosen this work. It is an opening wedge, an opening wedge into the life of an individual, the sharing of personal things that maybe would not be shared with others, a very closeness to the individual. And we are to reach in and touch the souls of each that come to the sanitarium. And Councils on Health, page 287, another consideration. Men who accept a position in any of our health institutions should do so with a f as full a realization of its responsibilities as possible. The Lord has promised to be a present help in every time of need, and there is no excuse for not doing more real missionary work at the sanitarium. Far better attention should be paid to obtaining a fitness for every duty. Workers should seek to improve that they may do their work in the best manner possible and with fidelity, so as to meet the approval of God. Opportunities for doing good have always been far in advance of the workers for they have failed to see and improve them because the enemy of right doing has had a controlling power over their minds. It's quite amazing. Uh, my wife and I have been uh, dedicated to missionary, medical missionary work since uh, 1975. And in these 40-some years of our experience, I don't think there's ever been a time 
when greater knowledge has come. Always something new, always something affecting society more and more. New inventions, new, new techniques uh, that affect the, the human machinery more and more. Um, we have been now exposed to the foods of the entire world, but now science is moving in and, and genetically modifying these foods. Always something. The, the, the workers should be on the cutting edge. Um, not only are they genetically modifying food, there's, they're stepping into genetically modifying even nature and man himself. So there, there are so many things that are transforming so quickly that um, only, only a true-hearted dedication to know the truth and to hold by the truth um, and to develop as much as possible uh, will keep up with what's going on. From uh, Councils on Health, page 292, we should be careful that we connect with all our sanitariums, those who will give a right mold to the work. Characters are to be formed here after the divine similitude. It is not the expensive dress that will give us influence, but it is by true Christian humility that we shall exalt our Savior. Our only hope for success in doing good to the people of the world who come to our sanitariums as guests is for the workers, each and every one, to maintain a living connection with God. If the workers in our sanitariums will surrender to God and take a high position as believers in the truth, the Lord will recognize this and we shall see a great work done in these institutions. Again, it's the dedication. The dedication God is just waiting uh, for us uh, to accept he wants to develop great things in each and every one of us. Uh, another consideration, Councils and Health, page 316. At one time, you made the suggestion that if the managers of our institution offered higher wages, they would secure a higher class of workmen and thus a higher grade of work. My brother, such reasoning is not in harmony with the Lord's plans. We are all his servants. We are not our own. We have been bought with a price and we are to glorify God in our body, in our spirit, which are his. This is a lesson that we need to learn. We need the discipline so essential to the development of completeness of Christian character. We're going to see in just a little bit here that God God is calling for sacrifice. And I, when my wife and I started to work for the uh, sanitarium in Arkansas in 1975, we were not paid. In fact, we even dedicated what money we had to the Institute. We worked for five years there and five years after for just room and board. But I must tell you that um, although there was some privation and plenty of sacrifice, the reward was, was uh, insurmountable. The, the amount of education that we got, um, much through trial, um, was, was unattainable by any other means. If you are willing to devote at whatever cost to fully engage in this work, the Lord will place um, in your hands uh, the greatest development possible. You could not achieve in any other way. From Councils on Health, page 316, it says, our institutions are to be entirely under the supervision of God. They were established in sacrifice and only in sacrifice can their work be successfully carried forward? Today, um, many people are not used to 
um, that hard of an experience. Communism has come down in many parts of the world. Um, a seemingly open societies have been introduced even in China and other places. So we are losing um, the value of the struggle. But it will take this, it will take this. Every one of us, every, every member of the church uh, will need to, to learn uh, to sacrifice, uh, especially as these days approach to us. Um, the controlling power of, of, of the countries upon peoples um, is going to call for much from each and every one of us. I think that our protection will be in doing what the Lord has instructed us to do here, to, to go ahead and, and start this kind of work. It will cost, sure, it will cost, but um, the reward may be eternity. So also, we, we need to consider um, the type, the type of sanitarium or institute work that God is calling for. From Councils on Health, page 220, it says, the Lord has instructed me to warn those who in the future establish sanitariums in new places to begin their work in humility, consecrating their abilities to his service. The buildings erected are not to be large or expensive. Small local sanitariums are to be established in connection with our training schools. In these sanitariums, young men and young women of ability and consecration are to be gathered. Those who will conduct themselves in the love and fear of God. Those who, when prepared for graduation, will not feel that they know all that they need to know, but will diligently study and carefully practice the lessons given by Christ. The righteousness of Christ will go before such ones and the glory of God will be their real reward. Here is his um, uh, great wisdom. We, we don't need to go in, in, in great debt. We don't need to, to uh, go to great expense to start this work. And, and whatever opportunity God brings, uh, start. Many, many of the institutions, uh, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, were started in houses, small places. Um, and then uh, grew as needed. Uh, fortunately, here in uh, White Creek Wellness Center, there were no buildings. So we had the opportunity to build our own buildings. And um, with in mind that we are not to go in great expense. We are not to, to uh, try to um, have these large buildings. Because when you build a building, uh, the larger it is, the more it costs just to to open a door, um, the electricity, the maintenance, um, uh, the heat and all the rest uh, costs. It costs lots of money. Some places um, that I've been to cost $1,000 a day when they are running. Uh, that's, that's a tremendous expense to try to keep. And if a situation comes up where it's a challenge, it's a challenge whether to, to keep the character of God or to keep the door open because of the large expense. It's, it's, uh, it, will, it, it will hinder the work. It will be a disturbance to the true quality of the work. So here in uh, Medical Ministry, page 323, it says, it is that thirsting souls may be led to the living water that we plead for sanitariums, not expensive mammoth sanitariums, but home-like institutions in pleasant places. Never, never build mammoth institutions. Let these institutions be small and let there be more of them that the work of winning souls to Christ may be accomplished. What does it say? Home-like institutions. This is very important. I, I feel it's very important. We spend each day with the individuals, we walk with them, we work with them in the gardens, in the different areas. We help them in the, in the hydrotherapy, in the treatments. Um, and we eat with, you know, we sit down at the table and eat the same meals with them. 
and they watch, they look at your plates, they see what you're, what you're um, putting on your plate, they see how you arrange things, they, they see what you eat, and they ask questions, you know, why this, why that? So this home-like environment, they become relaxed. It, it, it's um, very often when, when filling out forms and, and um, in, uh, information for, for us, we have a health sheets that they fill out. Not everything comes out, not everything is put down on paper, but in the time you spend in this home-like environment, they relax and then aspects of their life uh, come to surface and you can help them. You know, you, your life would be much improved if, if you could implement this instead of that, that you could try doing this. Um, and this is why it needs to be small. Again, not in debt, not massive. We can take, uh, we have seven bedrooms and five bathrooms in our main facility. And so we take, we take, uh, you know, at the most 10 or 12 people, but usually around eight, six to eight people at a time. Um, everybody becomes friends. They all enjoy each other. They, they are not, um, uh, not cold. It's not a cold environment. Again, it's that home-like, comfortable environment. Here is a picture of Battle Creek Sanitarium. This is a large institution. This was at the heyday of its existence. Um, it took approximately two city blocks in size, well over 2,000 employees. So we, we see that um, it's, too, it's too much because you lose the character. How do you, how do you keep control? How do you how do you manage that everyone working there is dedicated uh, to health reform? How do, you, how do you know each patient that comes, each patron that comes through the door? Um, and um, of course, eventually, you know, the, the, the institution was involved in, in even going away from the true knowledge of God. Be careful, we, we, we again, each one of us could start this work. Um, if God were to impress you, if your if your family's in that situation, you can do. You can take people into your home and start a work, and God can lead you, educate you, and take you um, on and on in an experience. And uh, two more references here from the Ministry of Healing, page one forty one. It is the divine plan that we shall work as the disciples worked. Physical healing is bound up with a gospel commission. In the work of the gospel, teaching and healing are never to be separated. And lastly, all of us. This is a calling for all of us. Uh, from volume seven of the testimonies, page 62, we have come to a time when every member of the church should take hold of medical missionary work. The world is a laser house filled with victims of both physical and spiritual disease. Everywhere people are perishing for the lack of knowledge of the truths that have been committed to us. The members of the church are in need of an awakening that they may realize their responsibility to impart these truths. It is also uh, salvational for each one of us. The more you're involved in the work, the more you see you need to dedicate yourself to, to these right principles. It will become a strengthening of yourself. You can become a strengthening of your church and you can be a, become a blessing to society. Thank you for giving me your time. May God bless you in your efforts. Thank you for being with us for this message about the Institute, an important subject that all of us need to consider. How may we help to get institutes going in all places? That is a question that needs to be foremost in our minds as we consider the work for these end times.
I'd like to invite you all to join with me in a closing prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you for the care and protection that you give us, for this knowledge that you've revealed unto us. We pray, Lord, that we may take hold of this work, this medical missionary work. We may carry it forward with energy and vigor, that we may hasten your soon coming, Lord, and we may help those who are in need. Help us to understand our individual need and our individual duty. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we'd like to thank you for joining us this evening, and we invite you to to attend our next meeting that will be at 7 p.m. tomorrow night, presented by Sister Lillian Balbach, the Secretary of the Medical Missionary Department of the General Conference, entitled Thriving Medical Missionary Families.